Good Thursday morning, everybody. Chris Allen here on the Sam channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. <laughs> I do it every time. It's like, oh, it's over here. No, it's over here. Okay, there we go. Anyway, so um, <laughs> nice rainfall yesterday. A lot of it was uh, for many of us, and we'll check some of the mesonet totals for the past 24 hours here in a minute. Uh, it seemed to be a good, steady soaking rain. I know. But then when you total up everything, uh, it, it comes out like that's all we got. Cause it seemed like a lot more. It was especially here in Bowling Green. I mean, around lunchtime and afterwards, it just seemed to be just almost nonstop for much of the afternoon. Um, but at the airport, they say they only picked up a quarter inch, actually 26 hundredths of an inch of rain. Seemed like a whole lot more, but again, some of you did get more, others got less. It's just like the last two or three days. It's hit and miss. It's uh, where it does rain, it rains really well. Uh, and, and, and we're catching up little by little, but we're still in that big deficit of about four inches behind where we should be on rainfall for this time of the year. So even though uh, you've had a couple of rainy days here, three in a row, uh, it's it's not as much as you think. Now, we're still dealing with that closed low-pressure system. It's still sitting south of us this morning. It's uh, over Georgia, and it's continuing even this far north to spin that moisture around, you can see it kind of spinning counterclockwise, mostly over middle Tennessee, but we're on the northern fringe of that big spin, and therefore, I'm going to keep in a chance of showers today. Now, it may not be as much as what we have seen in previous days. Uh, the weather service is even, like, cut it down to 10%. I, I'm not in total agreement with that. I still think there's enough moisture here. There's enough old boundaries here. And with a little daytime heating, I still think we're going to get showers this afternoon. And we may even start out this morning with some patchy fog in a couple of places that picked up rain yesterday. And we'll see some of that fog again tonight developing because of the saturation of moisture and the temperatures you know, the gr wet ground that usually gives rise to some fog as we get into the late night and early morning hours. But you see there, there's still plenty of moisture to work with. And that low is actually going to travel from Georgia back into Tennessee and back into Kentucky over the next 24 hours, which I'll show you on the maps here uh, momentarily. So, Yesterday's high, 78 because of the clouds and the showers, 88 is where we should be. So we were 10 degrees cooler than average for the day officially. And uh, today, still about mid to upper 70s for daytime highs. And despite whether we get any uh, rain or not in a lot of places, it's still going to run cooler than average because of the cloud cover that's going to be with us uh, for today. Let's check temperatures now from the Kentucky Mesonet Network as of 5 a.m. And we're seeing some upper 50s to the north, around 60 in the central part of Kentucky. Then you get to southern Kentucky where we are, and we're looking at more low to mid 60s and even some upper 60s back into western Kentucky. Let's uh, take a look at the precipitation totals, as I promised, past 24 hours, and these are at the Mesonet stations across the area. Uh, the highest that I see is going to be up in LaRue County, Hodgenville. They picked up almost seven-tenths of an inch of rain yesterday. But as we get into southern Kentucky, Here's our area, Bowling Green, a quarter inch. As I mentioned at the airport, that's about what they got. Southern half of town, 1300s, nothing. Or as far as where the Mesonet site is in 
uh, Russellville, Logan County, about two miles west of the center of town. They got nothing there, but in parts of Logan County, yes, you did get rain. Uh, same thing here with uh, Butler County. The mezzanine station is four miles south southeast of the center of town. So there it did not pick up anything, but the northern part of Butler County and the southeastern part of Butler County did pick up a little bit of rain. But you see, it's not much. The western part of the state didn't get much at all, and that's because of that circulation. Uh, it just, we were on the outer fringe of it yesterday, and it it just, it came a good rain. I thought it was a, I thought it would end up being more than that, but that's, I mean, these things are pretty accurate. So there you go. Another quarter inch over toward Bonaire and Butler or Barron County, and then 1700s down in Scottsville, Allen County. And then east of that circulation, it was hardly anything. So again, it was hit and miss showers, but where it did rain, it rained pretty well yesterday. All right, let's check uh, the outlook for the next 10 days with the model blender and you'll be able to see a heat wave coming that's going to be with us for the first few days of uh well the last few days of june and the first few days of july as we get closer to the fourth uh that's the next big holiday coming uh today again mid to maybe upper 70s remember we hit 78 yesterday we're looking at about the same thing today, even though uh, it shows 75, we could be closer to 77, 78 like we were yesterday. Low 80s as we get into Friday, still with a slight chance of showers. Then we start to uh, bubble up into the upper 80s and around 90. Now those numbers are where we should be on average for this time of the year. And then it looks like a a good heat wave is coming as we get into the final days of June, uh, the end of next week, and the beginning of the following week, maybe even some low 90s in there. The heat coming back along with the, well, the humidity has not really left us, but heat and humidity both uh, going to make for a very summer-like pattern as we are now, today is the first full day of summer complete full day of summer. Yesterday, summer started at 9.58 a.m. Central Time officially, and uh, now we're into summer for about 94 days, 94, 95 days. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hello, summer. Okay, here's a look at the uh, model map, and you can see where that low is this morning, just sitting there spinning about. Now, eventually, over the next 24 to 36 hours, that low is finally going to get caught up in an open wave. In other words, it's going to hit the jet stream. It's going to, it's finally going to be carried away, but that's not going to be until about Saturday or Sunday. So until then, this thing is still going to sit here and spin out some showers. And this is why I want to keep showers in the forecast for us today. Maybe not as many. But as you can see here, as we get into the afternoon, yeah, from about uh, I-65 east. So if we were to kind of draw a line of I-65 like that, everything east of that line or to the right of that line is still going to get showers as that front or that low pressure system continues to spin about. So the exact placement, you know, on these maps is not like 100%. So you have to put in that possibility that there's still going to be some showers. And like in the last couple of days, some of these could put down some very heavy rain briefly. But then it, uh, it ends up not being as much as you think. So here we go into this afternoon, this evening. There's still a chance that there could be some showers lingering in the area but and even there like overnight and into early friday morning there's still traces of maybe light rain and then you see this bubbling up again tomorrow 
into Friday, yeah, that's because the low is going to travel. It's going to be up right about here as we get into tomorrow morning. And then as we get into the uh, late afternoon hours, there's your daytime heating still popping up some of those showers and thunderstorms right there. The low moves a little bit further north into northeastern Kentucky over about Ashland, Huntington, Charleston, that area. Then it's finally going to be caught up in the jet stream like that. And it's finally, for the first time in over a week, it is going to be carried away in that jet stream energy, those upper winds, and finally moved out of the picture. So that low that's been here all week long is finally going to move out, and with it, the showers will move out for the time being, but I also see some showers in the forecast uh, for next week, for different days next week. So uh, while that system will move away, there will be another one coming in, and this one will be attached to a cold front, and it won't be a closed low pressure system like this one has been. And so therefore, it is going to be your typical west to east system being steered by the jet stream. And so it will just kind of, it'll come in and move on. It's not going to linger like this low pressure system has. But let's take a look. At the next seven days on the map, you can see that uh, energy still there. We're still painted in the green. Even this afternoon, showers, maybe a rumble of thunder especially along and east of I-65. And notice there's the low now attaching to a front that is going, this low is going to drift back into eastern Kentucky as we get into late Friday, early Saturday. There we go. And uh, it is going to continue to float until it hits the jet stream. And there it is. This is Saturday. We're going to push most of the shower activity east of us. There still may be a lingering late day pop-up shower somewhere in our area, but most likely the Cumberland Plateau in eastern Kentucky will see that. Then as we get into late Saturday into Sunday, here comes the next system. There goes our low. It'll be way off in New York State uh, and into New England. We'll have a warm front coming in on Sunday afternoon, and with it, ahead of it, there will be some showers and thunderstorms, and that dirty high I've been talking about, the high that's contaminated. It's there, but it's contaminated with moisture because it's not very strong. So here comes the warm front, lift ahead of it, showers and thunderstorms as we get into Sunday afternoon and evening, and here comes the cold front that will be with us on Monday coming in with a pretty good, pretty decent chance of showers and thunderstorms, maybe even some stronger storms. We'll have to watch that. Uh, then as we get into Tuesday, that moves on, but there's a little trough back behind it, which could keep a few showers in on Tuesday. By Wednesday, uh, we move all of this out. The front moves away. A real good, stronger high pressure begins to move in. But there's another system brewing out in the South Central Plains and the Desert Southwest, which will move east. And by the middle and end of next week, we could see yet another round of showers and thunderstorms coming our direction. So uh, the low pressure system that's been sitting and spinning all week long with these daily shower chances, that will finally move out on Saturday, late Friday into Saturday. But then the next system coming in, an actual cold front, that's going to move in for late Sunday into Monday, bringing us more showers. But this time, this will come in and move out, unlike the low that's been sitting here for an entire week. Uh, Mid-70s today with scattered showers, uh, especially along and east of I-65. That'll do it for this edition of the Sam Channel Podcast on this Thursday, little Friday, I like to call it, uh, coming up on the morning show on the radio at Sam 100.7. More giveaways, Beach Bend tickets, Christopher Cross tickets, uh, Thunderfest passes, 
I've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, hot rods, tickets to go see some games. Listen and win this morning on Sam. God bless you. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you on the radio.